Welcome everyone to a new workshop on healthy eating and today in this workshop what we're going to talk about is how to get a handle on your sweet tooth and curb that sugar craving. So we're going to talk about how to limit added sugar in your diet and strategies around doing that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to share my slides so you can see them. Already, I hope you can see my slides. Um, so, like I said, we are talking about healthy tips to eat less sugar in this webinar. And for those of you who haven't met me yet, I'm Taryn. I'm an eating behavior coach and nutritionist. Um, I'm a trained dietitian. And my whole premise is about um, finding that balance between being healthy and still enjoying our food, right? So it's not about massive detoxes or deprivation or feeling... Um, guilt and shame around food. It really is finding that that balance between being healthy um, but still being able to live your life, right? I always say we want to aim for being healthy most of the time. So let's get started. What I want to start with is just breaking down the different types of sugar because we get um, something called complex sugars or carbohydrates and we get simple sugars or simple carbohydrates. And carbohydrates in general have had a bad reputation over the last couple of years because of sugar and because sugar is a carbohydrate. But carbs come in loads of different forms, right? So they come as um, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and then the added white sugar, or brown sugar that you put on your cereal or in your coffee. So I always like to explain them as twins, if you like. There's the complex twin and there's the simple twin. And what we want more of is the complex carbohydrates. Your whole grains, um, your fruits and vegetables, those are really, really good for our in our diet um, because they have fiber in them, they have vitamins and minerals in them. So it helps to keep your body and your cells and your bones um, and your gut functioning really, really well. So it's really important not to cut out all carbs from our diet. This is why dieting, where you cut out whole food groups, is really not a good strategy. So we want to focus more on the complex carbohydrates. But where we want to really try and reduce, now I'm not saying you go cold turkey and cut out everything, but where we want to try and focus our attention and see how much we're eating is on the simple or added sugar. So those are your cakes, your pastries, your chocolates, um, all those very sweet type foods. And we're going to talk more about them um, in this webinar. And remember, it's very important. I'm going to keep highlighting this point. It's not about saying you can never have a donut or never have a cupcake. You're very bad if you have that. That's dieting talk. We don't do that here. You are allowed anything that you want to eat at any given time, as long as you are honoring your hunger, you're eating it slowly and mindfully and really enjoying it. It's just what you want. When you do those three things, you are much calmer around food. You eat less because you're less likely to binge on these foods that you are supposed to be not eating. And it takes all that obsession and that food drama away from these foods, this power that food has over you. So please bear that in mind when we're talking about these added sugars and how to reduce them because we don't want to go um, too extreme and get, get back into dieting mode, right? This is really just to help you highlight in your own diet where maybe there's a little too, ex, uh, too much or excessive sugars in your diet. But before we get into all of this, let's look at it from a science uh, or biological um, standpoint. So what changes in our body when we constantly eat high amounts of sugar? Well, over time, if you eat more than your body needs, this can trigger changes in your brain that can cause, wait for it, here's the nerdy comeback, a neurochemical dependency, which is just fancy talk for saying that we become addicted to eating. Now, eating particular foods like sugary foods, this can trigger this, a release of a brain chemical called dopamine. And dopamine tells your brain, hey, this is cool, this is groovy, and it makes you feel good. And this chemical reward feels so good that it increases the chances that you'll do it again and again and again. And this is how we get addicted to things. It's often what happens um, in alcohol or drug addictions. And so what we do, our brain associates this craving for this 
say, sugary food with feeling good. It makes that connection. And that's why we want it again and again. So when we're sad or we're stressed out or we're bored, we want that feel-good feeling and we go find that dopamine fix in a bag of cookies or crisps or something like that. And that's what makes um, quitting sugar a little bit tough to stop because of this dopamine chemical reaction in your brain. But the good news is that when we slowly reduce our sugar intake, our bodies can go back to normal reactions with dopamine and your taste buds don't crave as much sugar um, as they used to. Now, they did an experiment, uh, I think it was Harvard, where they, um, they took a group of women and they call it the milkshake experiment. And they took a group of women and they gave them a milkshake. I'm like, yep, sign me up for that trial. right? <laughs> and they monitored their brain reaction as they were drinking the milkshake. And what happens in the brain, you can see from the scans, it lights up all the areas when they're drinking the sugary milkshake, all the dopamine areas in the brain that go ping, 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 ping. Um, this feels good, yum, yum, yum. And so you can see that on the scan. And then what was interesting is they brought the same group of women back a year later. And what they noticed, they did the exact same experiment, same milkshake, same amount, same woman. During the year that they'd been away, some women had stayed the same weight, some women had put on weight, some people had lost weight. And what they found is the women who put on uh, weight had lower dopamine responses in their brain. So their brain didn't ping as much. It didn't highlight or, or glow, if you like, on the scan as much as the woman who had stayed the same weight um, or lost weight. And this is because they had gradually over the year eaten more and more sugar. And like any um, addiction, once you kind of get used to that level um, of, of addiction, you have to up the ante and up the ante and up the ante. And so they were increasing their sugar and increasing their sugar and increasing their sugar. And so the baseline where they had started didn't really float. It didn't really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, impact them as much or their brains as much. They didn't feel that feel good factor as intensely as somebody who had stayed the same weight because their baseline was the same. And so what this shows is as we increase the amount of sugar that we have, we just get used to that, and then we have more, and then we have more. And your taste buds get used to that taste as well. And so you have to keep up in the ante. And the, what's happening in our diets right now is there's so much sugar in our foods, and we don't really taste it anymore. Even things that we don't even think have sugar in them, like ketchup or bread, we don't taste the sweetness anymore. The good news is this is all reversible. As we slowly start to reduce the amount of added sugar in our diet, not only do we feel better and our skin looks better and we have less inflammation or pain in our joints, but also our balance to this chemical, this dopamine reaction comes back. So we get more of a feel-good factor on a smaller amount. But we have to slowly, gradually take ourselves down um, from this added sugar. But unless you know where this added sugar is coming from, you can't really do that. So this is where we want to get to. Now, if you're like, yeah, I don't know, maybe Taryn's being a little overdramatic. Well, let's look at the science, okay? We are sugar junkies. And the problem isn't when we indulge in a sweet treat every now and then, but when we constantly overeat sugar, which today in our food manufacturing and our processed foods, it is everywhere. And like I said, we're going to go through a few examples later on in this uh, webinar, but just to give you some context, most Americans and Europeans overeat in sugar. In fact, the average person has about 22 teaspoons of added sugar per day. The American Heart Association recommends that we limit our sugar intake, that's added sugar, to about six teaspoons per day for women and nine teaspoons for men. So that is a whopping almost four times more sugar that we're having than what is recommended for women and over double for men. That is a huge jump from what is recommended. Now I keep saying added sugar because I'm talking about this sugar that we add to our foods, not sugar that is naturally occurring, say like in our fruit um, or in our milk. Those also have natural occurring sugars. I'm not talking about those, I'm talking about that added sugar that we add to our foods. Crazy stats, huh? Now let's talk a little bit about fast food. Fast food is very addictive 
due to the large amounts of sugar and fat and salt that's packed into every serving. Now, these ingredients are known as trigger substances, meaning that when all three or a combination of them are um, added to food, they keep you coming back for more until your body is addicted to that food. Hello, junk food. Hello, fast food. Right, And this addiction spikes when other flavor enhancers or additives are added to the mix. So this is why when we talk about processed foods, I'm not talking about, um, you know, bread that is milled down. That's all, a lot of foods are processed, but I'm talking about your highly processed foods that have a lot of fat, sugar, or salt added, plus additives and flavor enhancers. Those are the foods, your frozen foods, um, your ready meals. Those are the kinds of things I'm talking about, pre-packaged foods. Now, again, just to reiterate this point, it is not to say that salt or sugar or fat is bad for you or you should cut it out of your diet. Quite the opposite. Your body needs a certain amount of healthy um, fats, sugar, and salt every day to function. So it is really important not to cut any of these things out completely from what you're eating. But the point I'm making is that how much we're having is too much, right? And we don't even realize it. The more you can recognize what you're eating, the easier it is to make those health changes. And thanks to fast food restaurants and processed packaging and the supermarkets and this um, in and out, go fast, eat fast um, sort of um, convenience, if you like, world that we live in where we eat takeout much more than we cook at home, this is becoming a problem. But when we take that step back and we look at what we're eating, we cook our meals with fresh whole ingredients using small amounts um, of salt, fat and sugar in our cooking, not only are you eating the right amounts and you're getting those, um, those natural foods in your whole grains and fiber, but you're also um, taking back that control over your food, right? You are deciding how much of those ingredients goes into your body and into your cooking and into your food. So your brain is no longer seduced by all these flavor enhancers and all these pre-packaged or fast foods. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about hidden sugars. Now, most people are, you're able to identify, oh, you know, added sugary type foods are desserts, candy, chocolates. We get that, right? Most people understand that. But there are also other foods that we don't think about that have a lot of added sugar in them. Um, even some that we consider, you know, healthy um, are actually mm, a little bit high on the sugar side. So let's go through a couple of them. Breakfast cereals is one of them. Now, I'm not just talking about the keto cereals um, with the little <laughs> uh, charms in them. Uh, we all know that those children's cereals from back in the day are very high in sugar. But a lot of your whole grain looking ones, your mueslis, um, those uh, can be high in sugar. And just because it says whole grain or fortified with vitamins and minerals, it doesn't mean there isn't any sugar. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's super healthy, right? We, many of our popular um, oats or bran cereals, they have added flavoring in them. It's got um, uh, maple syrup or their honey, uh, uh, apple and cinnamon. And those are added flavorings to them. And a lot of them um, equate to added sugar. So always have a look at the label um, and see, you know, what, how many grams of sugar it has. We don't really want to have a cereal that's more than 10 grams. That's about two teaspoons of, of sugar in them um, per, per serving. Now, the other trick is also to understand your serving size. Now, if you're reading a label, um, often it'll give you the nutritional values per serving size. Now, sometimes the food manufacturers can be a little bit sneaky and give you a Say it suggests the serving size is a teeny tiny amount. And really what we're eating for breakfast is double that amount. So just be realistic with yourself when you pour out your bowl of cereal. I don't like you to measure foods generally, but just as an experiment, just understand, are you eating the serving amount or are you eating double? Now that doesn't mean that that size is right or wrong. It's whatever fills you up into, until you're comfortably full. But when you're looking at the grams of sugar, Remember to compare it to what the serving size or how many grams they're comparing it with. Um, so it's always important to just have a bit of a squeeze at the label so you understand what you're eating. 
yogurt or yogurt, depending where you're from, um, can also have a lot of sugar in it. Now, I'm not talking about the plain yogurts. I'm talking about the flavored fruit yogurts. Whether that is a completely um, encapsulated flavored yogurt, um, where it's all blended in together, or the ones where they are layered, so they have little compote, compote of um, fruit at the bottom. It usually has a lot of syrup or, um, included in that. So sometimes they can have up to 30 grams. That's um, a lot of sugar in them, right, per serving. So it's really important to have a look at the types of yogurts you're eating because often we'll use that as a healthy snack. Um, so read the label. My um, preference and I, what I tell my clients all the time is rather have a plain, full fat, the like Greek yogurt, and add your own flavoring to it. Add your own uh, nuts, granola, honey, um, fruit into it because not only are you getting fresh fruit, and remember the fiber and the vitamins and minerals, but you are again in control of how much sugar you're putting into the body. Um, Condiments, salad dressings, sauces, all of these things can often have a lot of sugar in them. Think about your barbecue sauces, your ketchups. Um, sometimes, yep, yeah, your food needs an extra little kick and that's fine, but I just, again, want you to be aware of it. This is not to say you're never allowed them. It's just being aware of how much you're having. So my suggestion is always don't drown your food in sauces. Um, have a little bit on the side. Um, and flavor your foods more with herbs and spices rather than relying on pre-bought sauces or salad dressings. Again, you can make your own salad dressings at home. They're pretty easy to make with olive oil or avocado oil, um, some vinegar, whether that's malt or um, balsamic, lemon juice or limes, lots of different things, your raspberries, lots of different ways that you can jazz up your salads uh, with a quick and easy homemade salad dressing. Beverages and energy drinks and fruit juice, okay? So these are my bugbear because we often um, see them as healthy. Um, and in fact, a study conducted by um, John Hopkins uh, School of Public Health in the States, they found that drinking high levels of sugar sweetened carbohydrate beverages like sodas or um, energy drinks had a high, it was associated to a higher risk of coronary artery disease in adults without a history of cardiovascular disease. Um, and so what that means is they're at a higher risk of having heart attacks, also cancer and diabetes, right, with no underlying conditions. And this is because we consume them so quickly, they don't fill us up. So our sugar content goes, or, or intake goes really, really high. Um, and we don't even realize it. We think we're being healthy. Um, and if you think about some of the energy drinks that we have out there in the market, some of them have about 25 grams per eight ounce serving. Um, another example is iced tea, like the lemon iced teas. Those can also be super, super high, about 25 to 30 grams of um, sugar in them as well. Uh, another example is a cup of apple juice. That has about 25 grams. It's about five teaspoons. And think about how quickly you can drink a cup of apple juice, right? Glug, 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 and it's down. You don't even think about it. You're not full. And yet you've had five teaspoons of sugar immediately. Now, again, there are ways to combat that by using um, uh, fizzy water and flavoring it with lemons or limes if you want that bubbly, energizing feel. If you do drink energy drinks because you um, do a lot of sports, that's fine, um, but go for the low sugar ones. Um, you only really need an energy drink with electrolytes if you're doing more than an hour of exercise or you live in a really hot climate and, you, and you're exercising for a long period of time where you're sweating a lot. Um, other than that, you probably don't need electrolytes. Um, water to hydrate is perfectly fine. And then the other one, which everyone thinks is super healthy, is granola bars, <clears throat> right? Like they sound like a health food and they are marketed like a health food, but many have added sweeteners like corn syrup, brown sugar, honey, um, fructose, chocolate chips, yogurt coating on them, right? All of this ramps up the sugar um, amounts very fast. Anywhere between 
um, 10 to 12 grams, which is two teaspoons of sugar for a small granola bar. And again, you are much better off making your own granola bars, right? As soon as you do that and you kind of control how much sugar goes into them, they can drop to about five grams, one teaspoon um, per granola bar, which is a big jump. Okay, let's talk a little bit about we're delving a little bit more into food labels. So when you're looking at sugar on the back, often it'll have the grams of sugar. But if you're looking at the ingredients list, they can name it as something else. So often it'll be things like uh, agave nectar, brown sugar, cane crystal, um, corn sweetener, corn syrup, fructose, dextrose, maltose, anything with an O-S-E at the end is typically a sugar. I can add, also add things like fruit juice concentrate, right? Because fruit juice is a naturally occurring sugar. Now, or honey, or um, maltose, or malt syrup. Now, often I'll get a question of, well, isn't honey better than uh, uh, sort of white sugar? Yes, it is. It's still sugar at the end of the day. It is better because it has some anti-inflammatory um elements to it that can can help um, with sore throats or make you feel a little bit better. So it has some medicinal value over um, granulated white sugar. But at the end of the day, if we're looking at just it from a sugar perspective, it's still sugar at the end of the day. So it's still um, a teaspoon of sugar. It's a base of source, but it's still sugar. Again, not to say you can never have them. I just want you to be aware of what these things mean. Okay, so let's go through some really sneaky uh, food marketing labels that we often see on foods. The, uh, the, one of my bugbears, again, is no sugar added, right? Uh, we often see this on a label and we think, oh, okay, this is a no sugar added um, product. This is great. I'm going to drink it. Uh, or eat it. And so, for example, you'll often see this on um, certain juices, fruit juices. But what they, what the food manufacturers forget to tell you, or the, the fine print, if you like, is that this just means that they can put this label on foods if they don't physically add more sugar to the product. So the product can naturally have lots of sugar in it. For example, a bottle of fruit juice. It has naturally occurring sugar in it, but they can put a no added sugar label on it because they're not adding additional sugar to it. But you drinking a bottle of fruit juice, remember a little cup of apple juice um, that was five teaspoons of sugar. So if you're drinking a big bottle of fruit juice, that can be up to, I don't know, about between five and seven teaspoons maybe. And we think that we're not we're being healthy because it's fruit juice, fruit is good for us. It says no added sugar on it. But that's just because it has naturally occurring sugar. They don't need to sweeten it anymore. It is sweet enough. So just bear that in mind. Always question these labels that we find in the supermarkets. Sugar-free is often found on diet puddings, diet products, things like that. And if a product has less than half a gram or 0.5 grams of sugar per serving, they can say it's sugar-free. Um, but remember, what they often do to keep the sweetness is they add sugar alcohols, uh, which are lower in calories, but they can cause diarrhea. Um, these are things called mannitol, cybitol, or zorbitol, same thing in the oils. Um, they don't taste as nice, right? The diet versions of anything never taste as good as the real deal. So you're better off having the real thing and smaller amounts of it. But they, in larger amounts, they can actually cause diarrhea or stomach upsets. So you're better off having a proper chocolate mousse pudding than the diet pudding that says sugar-free on it. All right. And then the last one is fat-free, which is a notoriously misleading label. When the dangers of saturated and trans fats became clear or became really popular, the market was flooded with products that tooted, oh, this is fat free, right? And the problem is that they often, these fat free products often have just as many calories as the full fat versions. Because what happens if you take all the fat out of something, it's very bland unless you put something like those triggers, salt, or sugar back in there because you don't want to put the fat in so you have to put one of the other yummy 
ingredients back in there for people to keep buying this, keep buying and keep buying. And that's what the food manufacturers are interested in. They want you to keep buying. They're not interested in the health of it. They want you to keep buying that food. So they have to make it moreish. So what do they do? They take the fat out, they put a whole lot of sugar in there, right? So it still tastes yummy and you still come back for more. But what we do is we look, our brain just goes, oh, fat free, this is great. So take a, um, a yogurt, for example. Often they'll say fat free, but it is loaded, like a fruit yogurt loaded with sugar. And our brain is just focusing on the fat free, the fat free part, not the sugar part. So please be aware of those. You can always check on the back of the label and see how many grams. Five grams is about one teaspoon. So just use that in your head and remember to look at the serving size as well. Okay, so what can you do about these foods? Now, we've spoken a little bit about sugar swaps already, but let's go through a few more. We've spoken about switching out your fruit yogurt for plain yogurt and then flavoring it yourself so you control the sugar, whether that's with um, some blueberries on top, a little bit of granola, homemade granola is even better, um, some nuts, some raisins, dried fruit, honey and cinnamon, you name it. There are so many different things you can do with that. Sliced bananas. Um, but the, the key is here is that you are in control of how much um, flavorant or sugar goes on it. And it's a much more natural way to do it. If you like chocolate, um, try and slowly move over to dark chocolate. Not only is it a better quality of chocolate, but it's richer, it's creamier. And so we tend to be fuller on it quicker. So we eat less of it anyway. Um, if you don't love dark chocolate, you don't like dark chocolate, um, start with little bits and just see if you can get your taste buds used to it. You can try the different ones with a little bit of flavor in them, like um, uh, sea salt or chili or orange. They'll have a, The orange will have a little bit more sweetness to it. But again, you can start to just change your taste buds because we can, our taste buds change all the time. So we can navigate certain foods and just tr um, test out new things. That's the beauty and the fun about cooking and eating is trying new things, seeing what resonates with our taste buds. Fruit juice, um, you're much better off having a fresh piece of fruit. So if you think about a little glass of orange juice, it takes probably about uh, three oranges to make a small cup of orange juice. And you're losing out on all the fiber because that's all in the, um, in the flesh. Whereas if you think about, and, and how quickly do you drink a glass of orange juice this big? Glug, 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 gone. Whereas if you think about how many times would you eat three oranges in one go? Very rarely, <laughs> never. Um, so you're having a glass of orange juice that doesn't really fill you up because it doesn't have any of the fiber. You drink it really quickly. And it's three times the amount of sugar that you're having if you have the whole orange. It takes you longer to eat, chew it down, slows you down. All, you get all the fiber and you get a third of the sugar content. So always opt for fresh fruit um, over uh, fruit juice. If you drink a lot of soda and you like the whole bubbles, soda water is a great um, uh, substitute for that. And again, you can flavor that in lots of different ways with slices of um, lemon or lime or berries. Um, you know, you can really jazz it up as you like. A muffin. Um, that's basically just a bald cupcake, right? Let's just call it what it is. It's cake. Um, so again, it's not about saying you can never have a muffin. I just want you to be aware of what it is. Let's call it what it is. Uh, so if you want to switch out that for something a little bit healthier with a little bit less sugar, uh, something like um, a handful of nuts, you're still going to get that nutty, crunchy flavor that you get from the muffin, but a whole lot less sugar. And then granola bars, we've spoken a bit, a bit about. You can up for trail mix or you can make your own granola bars at home. Um, if you want a recipe for that, then please uh, look in the recipe section. There is um, a granola bar recipe. It's super easy. And the, the beauty about all of this is that you control what goes into, into your food. Right? Rather than leaving it up to the food manufacturers to tell you what, uh, what to eat and get you hooked on these foods. Uh, so that's everything from me. If you do have any questions that you want to ask me or if you want a recipe or some inspiration, um, please do reach out to me. I'm Taryn. My email is taryn at mindshiftme.com um, or you can find me on Instagram. Um, at mind shift me 
Uh, so give me a shout if you've got any questions. I'm happy to talk about this all day. <laughs> so uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone.